what did you do? I mean, like, you know, one of the things that we talk about is breaking away. So, you know, a lot of times people get into real estate and they, but you know, you have, you probably had a job before that, you know, tell me about your journey of breaking away and kind of having that faith and that trust just to say, Hey, let, let's, let's go in the direction. And I think part of it, what, what I want to hear, cause I, I know this for myself is I know that if I'm doing the right thing and serving others that I'm going to, my business is going to grow bigger than I can ever imagine. So I kind of get that same feeling from what you guys are doing. Yeah. I mean, and it wasn't a light switch, right? We didn't start there. We, we certainly had the entrepreneurial spirit, at least I did through college. Um, but I did go get some W2 jobs, some sales jobs in New York city. And then, um, and then even being a real estate agent, that's a job, you know I mean? So we were looking for properties and, and things like that for other clients and, um, you know, I think a lot of us either read a book or heard a story or met, met a mentor that kind of opens your eyes to the next level. I wasn't uh, born and raised in wealth. I wasn't born and raised with a mindset of investment other than, you know, 401ks. And, you know, you mentioned before, we're kind of anti-stock market. And that's because of the volatility of it for me. I mean, I run a podcast called Free From Wall Street just to let people know that like, that's not the only way. And I think for so long, we're all taught that that is the only way. And um, yeah, so, you know, read Rich Dad, Poor Dad, read Tax-Free Wealth, read some, some different um, educational books and decided, hey, I, I think I'm kind of unemployable. I'm not the easiest employee because I always have different ideas and um, that makes it difficult to be a, a duck, right? You want to be an eagle. And um, so the impetus of the business was my business partner and I actually wrote a business plan about a wholesale business, about a flip business. And he, um, and there was a death that was very close to us and they were, they were young, they were in their uh, late twenties and we just closed our first wholesale deal and we made $16,000 check and we split it 8,000 each. And he went to Costa Rica for a month to surf. And, uh, I was married at the time. He was not. He calls me up and he says, hey, why don't you guys come down here before we had kids? And we did. We went to Costa Rica for 10 days and we sat on the beach and decided that life was too short um, to not try. And we came home, we burnt the boats and without literally $1,000 in the, in, in the bank account, we decided to start this business and quit our W-2 jobs, which is not for everybody. I'm not saying that that's maybe the best idea for everybody, but for us it was. And uh and then, you know, fast forward 11 years later, and we are uh, changing our mindsets about what leadership looks like and what giving and serving looks like. And I think that it's an entrepreneurial journey that a lot of people go through. I think you only grow, uh, your business will only grow to the level of the lid that you are at as a leader. And what that means is probably giving up a lot of the things that you don't want to give up. It's empowering people that maybe you're not ready to empower yet. And it's just literally learning how to serve them in a better capacity so that they can grow and run the business to the next, uh, next heights. You know, absolutely. Um, I've been following and reading and consuming Dan Sullivan um, strategic coach stuff for since 1990. And I think he started in like 1985 or something like that. So it wasn't too long after he started, but he works with entrepreneurs all over the world. And a lot of the things that you're saying, you're exactly right. You know, you have your unique ability. Everybody has a unique ability that something that you do better than anybody else. And the more that we can spend our time in that unique ability, the, the happier we're going to be, right? And it, not only the more productive, but the happier we're going to be. And it's when we are forced to do things outside of our unique ability that we're not happy. So, you know, there, a lot of times people are listening to the show or they're reading a book and they could be, you know, um, they have a, they're, they're trading time for money somewhere and they want to break away from that, but they, 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 they need a transition plan. They need something more passive um, or maybe they, they need it to be a hundred percent passive. Like they don't want to, it's kind of who, not how, right. They want to find a who that can help them get into real estate, not learn how to get into real estate. So how yeah. do you help somebody like, like that, Stephen? Yeah, I mean, so all of our investors are passive investors. You know, we, we allow them to be as active or as passive as they want in terms of 
understanding the business. So, you know, we're the operators, right? We're going out and finding the deal. We're going out and operating the deal. We're, we're doing the CapEx. We're doing, you know, the renovations, the, the unit turns, the third party manager, managing them. Um, so our investors range from, I mean, my, you know, my eight-year-old is our smallest investor in terms of <laughs> nice. both age and dollar amount. Um, but she's invested in into our fund and that gets deployed and it makes passive income. And, and, you know, so our investors can be all, all different types of people. I have, you know, full-time retirees that are now full-time investors that just put their money to work and put it on the field. And that cash flow allows them to exist without depleting their legacy, right? The, the cash flows are over and above what the nut is. And they, they can now preserve that legacy um, number. And I think a lot of us were taught maybe to put everything into your 401k. And then when you start drawing down on it, that's how you retire, you know, that paradigm has shifted for me where it's like, no, you don't touch your principal, you live off the cash flows, and then your principal gets passed on to your kids. And that's kind of the legacy. Um, so all of our investors are either, you know, retirees, I have full time anesthesiologists that, you know, they, they're, they're making a good income, right? So they, they recognize that that active income, as long as it's turned into passive income over time, is beneficial to their life and lifestyle and retirement. So, you know, and then we send out monthly reports, you know, with pictures and videos and all kinds of fun stuff that they can look through 170 page asset management reports, which they can or cannot go through. So again, they can be as active or, or as passive as they want, but we want to put people in the position to at least make it uh, a passive income for themselves if they so choose. 